Bajra Shah, the seventh Mughal emperor of India, ruled from 1707 until his death in 1712. Born Muaitza, Shah was the third son of Aurangzeb with his Muslim Rajput wife Noor Bai and the grandson of Shah Jin. In his youth, he conspired to overthrow his father and ascend to the throne a number of times. Shah's plans were intercepted by the emperor, who imprisoned him several times. From 1696 to 1707, he was governor of Aukbrabad, Kabul and Lahore. After Aurangzeb's death Shah's brother, Muhammad Azam Shah, declared himself successor before his defeat in the Battle of Jajay. During his reign, Shah bloodlessly annexed the Rajput states of Jodhpur and Amber and sparked controversy in the Qutb by inserting the declaration of Ali as Wali. An uprising led by Sikh leader Banda Singh Bajra, begun during Shah's reign, continued after his death. Bajra Shah was buried in the Moti Masjid at Mirali in Delhi. Early Life Mwazam was born on October 16, 1643 in Baranpur to the sixth Mughal emperor, Aurangzeb, and his wife Begum Noor Bai. In 1663, when he was 20 years old, he was made the governor of the Deccan province. Mwazam saw the rise of Shivaji, who carved his own empire in Konkan and around Pune from the Mughal Empire. That year Mwazam attacked Pune, where he was defeated and imprisoned for eight years. In 1670, Mwazam organized an insurgency to overthrow Aurangzeb and proclaim himself the Mughal Emperor. However, Aurangzeb learned about the plot and sent Begum Noor Bai to dissuade him. Noor Bai brought Mwazam back to the Mughal court, where he spent the next seven years under Aurangzeb's supervision. However, Mwazam revolted in 1680 on the pretext of protesting Aurangzeb's treatment of Rajput chiefs. This time, Aurangzeb followed his previous policy to dissuade Mulsam with greater vigilance. For the next seven years, from 1681 to 1687, Mwazam was a grudgingly obedient son. In 1681 he was ordered to crush a revolt against Aurangzeb by his brother, Sultan Muhammad Akbar, in the Deccan. According to historian Muniz Faraqui, Mwazam deliberately failed in his mission. In 1683 he was ordered to invade the Konkan region to prevent Akbar from doing so, but again his half-hearted mission failed to achieve the assigned goal. In 1687 Aurangzeb ordered Mulsam to march against the Sultanate of Golconda, and the Emperor's spies intercepted messages between Mulsam and Golconda ruler Abel Hussein. After learning of his son's intentions, Aurangzeb charged him with treason and imprisoned him. His harem was shipped off to faraway Delhi and also charged with treason. Mwazam's loyal servants were moved by his father into the imperial service, and the remaining servants were sacked. Aurangzeb forbade Mwazam to cut his nails or hair for six months, receive good food or cold water, or meet with people without the ruler's permission. Around 1694, Aurangzeb rehabilitated Mwazam and allowed him to rebuild his household, rehiring some of his servants who had been dismissed. Aurangzeb continued to spy on his son, appointing his men to Mulsam's household, sending informants to his harem and choosing his representatives at the imperial court. Mulsam and his sons were transferred from the Deccan to North India, and were forbidden to lead military expeditions in that region for the rest of Aurangzeb's reign. In 1695, Aurangzeb sent Mulsam to the Punjab region to fight the chieftains and subdue a rebellion by the Sikh guru Gubain Singh. Although the commander imposed heavy taxation on the Rajas, he thought it necessary to leave the Sikhs undisturbed in their fortified city of Anandpur and refused to wage war against them out of genuine respect for their religion. That year Mulsam was appointed governor of Aukbrabad, and in 1696 he was transferred to Lahore. After the death of Amin Khan he assumed that position in 1699, holding it until his father's death in 1707. Reign equals war of succession equals, without appointing a crown prince, Aurangzeb died in 1707 when Mulsam was governor of Kabul and his half-brothers were the governors of the Deccan and Gujarat respectively. All three sons intended to win the crown, and Kambakesh began minting coins in his name. Azam prepared to march to Agra and declare himself successor, but was defeated by Mulsam at the Battle of Jajay in June 1707. Azam and his son, Ali Tabar, were killed in the battle. 
Muazzam ascended the Mughal throne at age 63 on June 19, 1707, with the title of Bajar Shah I. Equals annexations equals. Amber. Jorswant Singh was the leader of the Rathor and Jodhpur during Aurangzeb's reign. During a war of succession Singh sided with Aurangzeb's older brother Dara Shaiko, who was killed by Aurangzeb. Singh was pardoned, became titular ruler of the region and was appointed governor of the province of Kabul before his death on December 18, 1678. After his death, Aurangzeb ordered Singh's widows and his son to be brought to Delhi and try to obtain possession of the son by force. Gadis Rathor fought an unsuccessful war to prevent this, but the widows and young Ajit Singh fled from Delhi to Jodhpur. After Aurangzeb's death, Singh marched to Jodhpur and took it from Mughal rule. After ascending the throne, Shah made regaining Jodhpur and the other lost cities of Rajaterna a prime objective. In October 1707 the Adepur ruler Amar Singh sent his brother, Bakht Singh, to Agra with gifts of 100 gold coins two horses and an elephant. On November 10 Shah began his march to Amber, visiting the tomb of Salim Chishti in Fethi Pasikri on November 21. In the meantime, Murab Khan was ordered to take possession of Jodhpur. Shah reached Amber on January 20, 1708. Its throne was disputed by two brothers, Ji Singh and Vijay Singh. Shah ruled that because of the dispute, the region would become part of the Mughal Empire and the city renamed Islamabad. Ji Singh's goods and properties were confiscated. Bijai Singh was made the ruler on April 30, 1708. Shah gave him the title of Mtsaraja, and he received gifts valued at 100,000 rupees. Amber passed into Mughal hands without a war. Jodhpur, in Amber Shah announced his intention to march to Jodhpur when Murab Khan defeated Ajit Singh at Mehtha and he reached a town on February 21, 1708. Waziris at Khan's son Khan Zaman, Bud Singh and Hejbat Khan were sent to bring Singh to the city for an interview with Shah, where Singh received special robes of honor, and a jeweled scarf. Shah reached AJMER on March 24, and visited the Dargah Sharif. On April 23, Ajit Singh was made ruler of the province, with the title of Maharaja, and received 3,000 horses. Like Amber, Jodhpur came under Mughal control without bloodshed. Adepur, in Jodhpur, Shah heard that Amar Singh too had fled Adepur to the hills. According to the Bajar Shah Nama Chronicle, because of this Shah called Amar Singh an unbeliever. Shah waged war against the king until his brother Muhammad Kambakshi's insurgency diverted him southward. Equals Kambakshi's uprising equals Court rivalry. Shah's half brother, Muhammad Kam Baksh, marched to Bijapur in March 1707 with his soldiers. When the news of Aurangzeb's death spread through the city, King Said Nilas Khan surrendered the fort to him without a fight. Ascending the throne, Kam Baksh made Azan Khan Bakshai, Takarab Khan chief minister, and gave himself the title of Padsha Kam Baksh Adin Panna. He then conquered Kulbaga and Wakin Khira. Rivalry developed between Takarab Khan and Ardzan Khan. Ardzan Khan had developed a marketplace in Bijapur where, without permission from Kam Baksh, he did not tax the shops. Takarab Khan reported it to Kam Baksh, who ordered the practice stopped. In May 1707, Kam Baksh sent Ardzan Khan to conquer the states of Golconda and Hyderabad. Although the king of Golconda refused to surrender, Subadar of Hyderabad Rustam Deel Khan did so. Takarab Khan conspired with Sayyid Ahmed to eliminate Arzan Khan, alleging that meetings of Arzan Khan, Sef Khan, Arsan Khan, Ahmad Khan, Nasir Khan and Rustam Deel Khan to discuss public business were a conspiracy to assassinate Kam Baksh while on his way to the Friday prayer at the Great Mosque. Kam Baksh invited Rustam Deel Khan for dinner. Arrested en route. Rustam Deel Khan was killed by being crushed under the feet of an elephant. Sef Khan's hands were amputated, and Arshad Khan's tongue was cut off. Ardzan Khan ignored warnings by close friends that Kam Baksh would arrest him, but he was imprisoned and his property seized. In April 1708, Shah's envoy Maktabar Khan came to Kam Baksh's court. When Takarab Khan told Kam Baksh that Maktabar Khan intended to dethrone him, 
Cambach invited the envoy and his entourage to a feast and executed them. Shah's march to South India, in May 1708, Shah wrote a letter to Cambach which he hoped would be a warning against proclaiming himself an independent sovereign and began a journey to the tomb of Aurangzeb to pay his respects to his father. Cambach thanked him in a letter, without either explaining or justifying, his actions. When Shah reached Hyderabad on June 28, 1708, he learned that Cambach had attacked Mashlibanda to seize over three million rupees worth of treasure hidden in its fort. The Subadar of the province, Jan Sai Khan, refused to hand over the money. Enraged, Cambach confiscated his properties and ordered the recruitment of 4,000 soldiers for the attack. In July, the garrison at the Kulbaga fort declared their independence and garrison leader Dela Khan Bai Japarai reported his desertion from Cambach. On November 5, 1708 Shah's camp reached Baidar, 67 miles north of Hyderabad. Historian William Irvin wrote that as his camp drew nearer desertions from Cambach became more and more frequent. On November 1, Cambach captured Pam Naik's holdings after Naik abandoned his army. According to Irvine, more soldiers deserted as Shah's group neared. When Cambach's general told him that his failure to pay his soldiers was the reason for their desertion, he replied, What need have I of enlisting them? My trust is in God, and whatever is best will happen. Thinking that Cambach might flee to Persia, Shah ordered Mughal Prime Minister Zulfi Kakan Nasrat Young to agree with Madras Presidency Governor Thomas Pitt to pay him 200,000 rupees for Cambach's capture. On December 20, Cambach was reported to have a cavalry of 2,500 and an infantry of 5,000. Death of Cambach On December 20, 1708, Cambach marched towards Talar by Mirjamla, on the outskirts of Hyderabad, with 300 camels, and 20,000 rockets for war with Shah. He made his son Jahandar Shah commander of the advance guard, later replacing him with Khan Zaman. On January 12, 1709, Shah reached Hyderabad and prepared his troops. Although Cambach had little money and few soldiers left, the royal astrologer had predicted that he would miraculously win the battle. At sunrise the following day, Shah's army charged towards Cambach. His 15,000 troops were divided into two bodies, one led by Mumin Khan, assisted by Rafi Ashan and Jinan Shah, and the second under Zulfi Kakan Nasrat Yung. Two hours later Cambach's camp was surrounded, and Khan impatiently attacked him with his small force. With his soldiers outnumbered and unable to resist the attack, Cambach joined the battle and shot two quivers of arrows at his opponents. According to Irvine, when he was weakened by loss of blood, Shah took him and his son Baraikla prisoner. A dispute arose between Mumin Khan and Zulvi Khan Nasrat Yung over who had captured them, with Rafi Ashan ruling in favor of the latter. Cambach was brought by Palanquin to Shah's camp, where he died the next morning. Sikh Rebellion Unlike previous Mughal rulers who divided power between Mughal and Rajput chiefs, during Shah's reign all power resided with him. The Sikh Khalsa, under the leadership of Banda Singh Bajra, and their army defeated the Mughals in battle at Samana, Sirhind and Royan and captured the cities of Samana, Sirhind, Malakotla, Saharanpa, Ran, Bahat, Ampita, Ropa and Jolindhor from 1709 to 1712. With an army of 80,000 soldiers, Bajar also besieged the city of Jalalabad in present-day Afghanistan. Equals efforts at suppression equals, Shah signed peace treaties with Ajit Singh of Jodhpur and Man Singh of Amber before fighting Bajar. He also ordered the Nawab of Ordasa Fadullah, provincial governor Karnai Durrani, Muradabad Fordar Muhammad Amin Khan Chin, Delhi Subadar Asad Khan and Jammu Fordar Wazid Khan to accompany him into battle. Shah left AJMER for the Punjab on June 17, 1710, mobilizing groups opposed to Bajar on the way. When he learned about Shah's plans, Bajar unsuccessfully appealed to Ajit Singh and Man Singh for help. In the meantime, Shah had reoccupied Sunipat, Kethal and Panipat en route. In October, his commander Faroz Khan wrote to him that he had chopped 300 heads of rebels. Khan sent them to the emperor, who displayed them mounted on spears. 
On November 1, 1710 Shah reached a city of Karnal, where Mughal cartographer Rustam Deel Khan gave him a map of Thainza and Sir Hind. Six days later, a small group of Sikhs were defeated at Mawati and Banswal. The city of Sir Hind fell to the Mughals on December 7. Its besieger, General Muhammad Amin Khan Badger, gave Shah a golden key ring commemorating the victory. After failing to recapture Sajora Shah marched towards Loga, where Badger was hiding. On November 30 he attacked the Loga fort, capturing three guns, matchlocks and three trenches from the rebels. With little ammunition left, Badger and a few hundred of his followers fled. His follower, Gulab Singh, entered the fight and was killed. Shah issued imperial orders to the rulers of Khomein and Srinagar that if Badger tried to enter their province, he should be sent to the emperor. Suspecting that Badger was allied with Bhup Prakash, the king of Naran, Shah imprisoned Prakash in January 1711. His mother begged in vain for his release. After she sent him captured followers of Badger he ordered the tournaments worth 100,000 rupees should be manufactured for her, and Prakash was released a month later. Shukun Khan Badger and Himit Dila Khan were sent to Lahore to end Badger's rebellion, and their unsuccessful attempt was reinforced by a garrison of 5,000 soldiers. Shah also pressed Rustam Deel Khan and Muhammad Amin Khan to join them. Badger was hiding in Al Halab, seven miles from Lahore. When Mughal workers came to repair a bridge in the village, his followers disinformed them that he was preparing to attack Delhi via AJMER. Badger received soldiers from village ruler Ram Chand for his march against the Mughals, and besieged for Chiabad in April 1711. After learning from messenger Rustam Yung that he crossed the Ravi River, Shah attacked with artillery led by Isa Khan. In the July battle, Badger was defeated and fled to the Jammu Hills. Forces led by Isa Khan and Muhammad Amin Khan followed, but failed to capture him. Shah issued an edict to the Zamindars of Jammu to take the Sikh captive if possible. Badger was attacked by Muhammad Amin Khan at the river Sitluj, escaping to the Gahal Hills. Finding him invincible, Shah went to Ajit Singh and Ji Singh for help. In October 1711, a joint Mughal RAJPUT force marched towards Sajora. Badger escaped the ensuing siege, this time taking refuge at Kulu in present day Hamakal Pradesh. Throughout Badger Shah's reign, Badger bedeviled him, and the Delhi Mughal administration failed to suppress the Sikh rebellion. Equals cut the controversy equals, after ascending the throne, Shah altered the public prayer for the monarch said every Friday by giving the title Wasi to Alia Euro the fourth Sunni and the first Shia Caliph. Because of this, the citizens of Lahore resented reciting the Kutba. To solve the problem, Shah went to Lahore in September 1711 and had discussions with Haji Yar Muhammad, Muhammad Murad and other well-known men. At their meeting, he read books of authority to justify using the word Wasi. Shah had a heated argument with Yar Muhammad, saying that martyrdom by a king was the only thing he wanted. Yar Muhammad recruited troops against Shah, but no war was fought. Shah held the Katib at the Bad Shahi Mosque responsible for the matter, and had him arrested. On October 2, although the army was deployed at the mosque the old Qutba was read. Death According to historian William Irvin, Shah was in Lahore in January 1712 when his health failed. On February 24 he made his final public appearance, and died during the night of 27 Euro February 28. According to Mughal noble Kamwa Khan, he died of enlargement of the spleen. On April 11, Shah's body was sent to Delhi under the supervision of his widow Maipa Wan Chin Kilic Khan. He was buried on May 15 in the courtyard of the Moti Masjid in Miruli, which he built near the Daga of Kutbud in Bakshakaki. Coins, Shah issued gold, silver and copper coins, although his predecessors' coins were also used to pay government officials and in commerce. Copper coins from Aurangzeb's reign were re-minted with his name. Unlike the other Mughal emperors, Shah's coins did not use his name in a couplet. Poet Danish Man Khan composed two lines for the coins, but they were not approved. Personal life equals name, title and and lineage equals Shah's full name, including his titles, 
was Abel Naz Sayyid Qutb Uddin Muhammad Shah Alam Badger Shah Badger. After his death, contemporary historians began calling him Qud Manzil. He was the only Mughal emperor to have the title Sayyid, used by descendants of the Prophet Muhammad. According to William Irvine, his maternal grandfather was Sayyid Shah Mir. Equals children equals, source, Irvine, pages 143 a Euro 144. Notes. References. Fawakwi, Muniz D., The Princes of the Mughal Empire, 1504 a Euro 1719, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978-1-107-02217-1, Parai, BN, A Comprehensive History of India, Comprehensive History of Medieval India, Sterling Publishers, ISBN 978-81-207. 2508-9, Singh, Raj Pal, The Sikhs, The Journey of 500 Years, Pentagon Press, ISBN 978-81-86505-46-5, 5. Irvin, William, The Later Muggles, Low Price Publications, ISBN 81-7536-406-8.